I don't know if I've seen this one. I've seen a few of Jim Browning's work, but I don't know if I've seen this one. This building in southwest Delhi holds a dark secret. The building houses Fairmart Travels, an Thank innocent you, sounding travel the agency, bitful. except that it's just a front for a scamming business. And to the rear of the building, in a secret office, there's a room full of scammers. And incredibly, I've been able to see exactly what they do through their own CCTV. Fuck yeah. Yes, sir, I can. Yeah, I'm still there. Yep. So you're lying right. about that. Are you? What, what's going Trixie? on here? I hope you're kidding about that, man. What's going on? Hello? Allow me one minute, sir. I'm just checking that for you, okay? Yeah, please stay on the line. So, wait, wait, hello? He's calling this in for backup. He calls himself Mark Robinson, but his real name is Chewin. And yes, I'm watching him live on his hello? own CCTV. Hello? Hi. Yes, sir. Yeah, so what's all this about Hi. stopped services then when they should be running? I don't get it. Yeah, sir. Sir, you need to go ahead and get it fixed, and there will be a one-time charge, sir, okay? He's so getting nervous. Why would you charge me when there's nothing wrong? That's quite normal. No, there are certain technical things that has to be fixed. Technical things. Go on, try me. I'm quite technical. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir, but there will be a charge if you want. We can fix it. But, or if you don't want, I can go out. He's of pretty good. No just pay it. I just want to know what's wrong. We need the diagnosis I mean, of the computer problems. So pay him. What's wrong? Only he knows. Sir, well, I'm just a junior level technician. We need to assign the case to the senior level technician. You're about to see one of the most comprehensive views of the inner cheap. workings you, of one of these scam call centers ever seen on YouTube. Any chance you ever you saved any of pretty those old Years of War videos? <laughs> Did you say but let's start at the beginning. How exactly did I find out that Fairmart Travels were behind this pop-up scam? Like most scammers, they buy fake and malicious adverts. Oh. These adverts claim that your computer has a virus and it will lock your PC. I remember the first time I encountered one of these, I panicked. You to ring the number which is shown on screen. And I believe it's it was on Red Tube, just actually. To close this window. On top of this, a very loud warning will play in the background. Security message. Your computer has been locked up. Your IP address was used without your knowledge or consent to visit oh, perhaps, websites Julie. that contains identity theft virus. If you've not encountered anything like this before, you can see how it's possible that some people will phone the number in the hope that they can get rid of what looks like a virus. Of course, there's nothing wrong at all. It's all just to encourage the phone call. And if you watch my channel at all, you'll know that I deliberately phone these numbers. Nice. I have my PC set up in a way that if they attempt to scam me, and they usually run a very set script, I will reverse this connection and gain access to the <laughs> scammer's PC. So when my they man. did try to steal money from me, they described their organisation as iTech Securities. This would turn out to be one of many aliases which Fairmont Travels will use. And the method they used to take these payments was through PayPal. Something it's incredible that how scamming the scam has like real right businesses. The managing director. And when I gained this reverse access, this the full thing time that was scam centers really was impressive that shit. they had CCTV. This would provide a fascinating insight as to how their operation worked and what the layout of the building was. This would prove very useful for identifying who Thanks they were. Loan staff On the, the basement prime, floors, yeah. there were server rooms, a kitchen, and a canteen. The CCTV around the main gates of the building showed that there were guards present. This isn't unusual. We're with a Fortune 500 bank, and we lost Delhi, almost a mill to scams. Show exactly what the road and surroundings looked like. Really? Like the scams are usually like Watching super easily avoidable. The place, Do I people at your bank just like click every the email building. they get? This person, Sexy for example, singles in your area. is walking around the first floor, and this is to the rear of the premises. But most of the cameras in the No, I know it's mainly old people, but a at a bank? Office building. How does that happen? There were lots of people working on desks with computers, and certainly in the main building, on floors one to three, it didn't seem to be that What's there were... What's that motivational quote? In business are never done by one person, they're done by a team of people. Steve Jobs... Well, 
it's almost fitting that Steve Jobs is the motivation for the entire scam center, I guess. Uh, wild. Were any scammers present? These were real workers doing real jobs in probably intervention a real in Xavier. travel agency. But there were another two floors which were covered voice. by CCTV, which didn't seem to have anything to do with the main office building. There was one of these floors where I was certain that the scammers uh, were You keep recommending Script Kid. I, I said so maybe, I needed I a bit of help. Someone who but could photograph the outside of the call centre and try and find out where the second building was. So I called on my friend, Carl Rock. Like me, Carl exposes scams well, already in dead India, and, you, man. and I urge you Thanks to check out his sleep. channel. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a link to his version of this video. And after Carl shot this footage, I noticed that there was something that appeared on one of the CCTV cameras. Is it the world's worst bus driver who's blocking the entire fucking road? This looks like a scene out of Mission Impossible where, like, uh, all the bad guys are gonna storm out and steal the president or something from the, the fucking cavalcade. Like, what is this? This guy needs to be arrested. Fuck the scammers, let's get this bus driver. From the CCTV, I could see that there was a roof garden right outside the room that the scammers operated in. And lo and behold, right behind the Fairmart building was another building with a roof garden. Fairmart had only recently installed CCTV and it was Thanks during that installation two. process that the camera was briefly fixed the on that leaf. roof garden. Eventually, the camera would be turned round to a static position in front of the offices where the scamming took place. So Carl, very kindly, took a second lot of drone shots of the building behind Fairmart. This is where their scams operated from. Nice. This is one of the cleverest but sneakiest ways of disguising the fact that they're a scamming way. group. If the police ever did raid the main building, they would only mm -hmm. find legitimate computers and legitimate offices. And I could see that it was the alleyway between the two buildings that was being used by scammers <laughs> to move between the legitimate and illegal offices. The people who were employed to run the scams didn't even need to use the front door of He's the, the normal toasty. office. All very clever. But the CCTV didn't have any audio. But I could see them using remote access software. It's Prime Rude Here, Boy. this scammer is using GoToAssist and even sometimes the pop-up which would appear on their victims' PCs. But although their CCTV didn't record any audio, they happened to record audio on a different system called Ringba. <laughs> this is their VoIP provider which allowed them to use UK and what? US phone numbers, but it had the advantage where every phone call they received was recorded. Nice! You would have good reason to wonder why a travel company would run a campaign called USA Blue Screen of Death or UK Adult. Oh, and because they recorded all huh? of their calls, I could listen in on some of them. For calling support, my name is Alwyn. How can I help you today? Um, I just got an important security message. I'm making it says my computer is being shut down. What were you doing on the computer when you got this message? Is this edit? Oh, we can only hear lower his, uh... down the volume of your computer. Yes. This five, so since magenta. I had all Thank of your you. audio files, all Thank I you. needed to do was take the timestamps of the audio and match them to the timestamps of video. Oh. This would allow me to see other people being scammed. God damn, that's thorough. What is this background? <laughs> Are we sure we're in a scam center? Is this just maybe a pornography headquarters? Also, when you think of like crime and shit, the movies have you believe that everyone's like really cool looking like trench coats and sunglasses and then you actually look into like a crime ring and everyone just looks like a bunch of nerds. Like, I feel like after this, they went home and just started rolling D20 dice and having a blast. Just committing crime by day and D&D &D by night, eh, boys? Thanks for your call. They're speaking with Luke. Can we help you? Hi. I was just trying to watch... Both ears are needed for the audio. Well, that's rough because this is broken. Oh, well. Is there some cheese house in the prime blitzed?
and it's telling me it's locked and I have to call security. Okay, and what were you trying to do on this computer? I'm watching movies. Is this your personal computer or it's a family computer? It's a work computer. It's a work computer, okay. So you can turn on mono audio and Windows. I, I'm not Jim Browning. Your your hacker man lingo and jargon means nothing to me. Do you have any IT guy? I don't know how to do that. Sorry? Nor do I want to learn. Do you have any IT guy in your work, in your office? No, I'm at home now. It's... He's the research I hunter okay. and fun home. guy. Not yet, fun guy. Okay, because there will be a one-time charge if we fix something online. Good news. Free. That's good news. If there's that. any software issues, there will be a one-time charge. Glad it so will that fine for you? Are you the authorized for that? Well, why would my computer be locked in the first place? I was just watching movies. Makes the There could be some viruses which download from that online movies website. Oh. Yes. So I have to so check the computer in, but. I have to check the computer and according to that there would be a one time charge that would be the diagnose charge and if there is any other issues they will be charged according to that. Why is he sniffing his fingers? Uh, the minimum which is diagnosed charge Smells like my asshole. will cost around yeah. 50 pounds. And if I don't have 50 pounds to pay? Then you can take this computer to local store or a local technician. No. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm fine. That was easy. Thanks, Reset Hypnotoad. And because I could see what the supervisor was monitoring, I could also see the scammers' names. The green color meant that someone was engaged in a call with a victim and the orange colour indicated that a person was waiting on a call. And, depending on the day and the time, there could be anything from just two agents to 22 on the floor. Thanks, Theresa Blexenay. And when they answer their phone, they would of course never give their real name. They would always give a fake English-sounding one. So I thought I would phone them up and try and work out which name they would use and this see guy is the all alone on the CCTV. Uh, but I'm hoping I can reach... That guy, whatever his name is. We got him, pussy. Hit him with some Xbox Live shit. Go wild on him. So this guy called himself Jerry. But of course, when the office was busier, it was much harder to work out who I was speaking to, so I needed another tactic. I would deliberately change my desktop background to something really obvious. Now type help me all in one word. <laughs> help me. And then allow one of their scammers to connect to my PC. And once the scammer had remote access to my computer, I'd simply use their CCTV to see who was looking at the monitor with the purple screen. That's so smart. Holy shit. Connected with you. You can see my this guy would make the, the ultimate computer. anime okay. villain. Yeah. I see that. Right. Okay. Right. So, so you do not have to worry about anything, sir. You're talking to Windows certified technician. So I'm just going to find out first, shit. Of, first of all if anything's wrong on the computer system. So how long have you had this computer, sir? Like how old is this computer? Uh, oh, I think oh, it's only a year old or something. Okay. Just Sorry, a year uh, old, so right? Just who, so who, am I, just who am I talking to here? Thanks for some corp. This is Chris Young, sir. I'm a Windows certified technician. And so now I knew what the person who called themselves Chris Young looked like. It might be using. I'm sorry. Is this Microsoft? No, sir. I'm, I'm... It Who's has nothing to do. It has nothing Levy to do with the Microsoft. Ofka? It's a Windows support. I believe you are using a Windows computer. Unfortunately, some of the CCTV cameras were set up worse than others. And when I switched to the like of camera 5, it gave a bit of a distorted and black and white view, but it was still enough to see who I was speaking to. The exact problem going on on the computer system, okay. right? Yeah. So why, why you got the tier number one on the computer core, screen is so because when you first bought the computer, the securities of this computer was registered. 
but the camera was more than good enough to watch the scammers squirm whenever they were challenged. I hope you're I hope you're not breaching Microsoft's copyright here. Because if you put a window up saying Microsoft at the top, okay, you're not okay. Microsoft. You can that, but what you can do, sir? What you can do? What, well, what I, do you want to do? What do you well, I don't do know. I think, think I should be you going think to. I'm breaching your. Thanks for some slime and so straight. No, I think you're impersonating Microsoft, and I think you're you trying to scam people. That's what I think is going on here. Okay, so now you're in that part right now, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you've lied to me about what not stopped tier showing. One, I'm going to show you all the services, sir. So the, the services should be stopped, as you well know. I'm going to show you all the services, everything. Yeah, this, some of them should be started. I'm sorry? Some of them should be running. And some of them should be stopped because they're, they're, they should be started manually. So what are you going to show me here? I'm not going to show you anything, sir. You can, this is your computer. You can do whatever you want. Is there anything else you want to ask? Anything else you... You have any doubt? Yeah, I want to insult know him. People. Insult him. Oh, he should have gone much it? harder. But there are hundreds of victims of this crime, and I want to do something about Your it. Your so shirt first looks time like ever, shit right now, and then just start calling him out. UK documentary team. Describe what he's Panorama. wearing. That Pretend to be a god. To travel to India to confront the owner of this call center, and I've left a link to their video in the description below. By sharing the footage, I'm hoping that more people can be made aware of these Thanks scams the Uncle and Tiny. some will be prevented. If you're a patron of mine, you can already see the first three parts of this video on Blurred. But for the public YouTube videos, I have one, to Justin. blur some of the details to meet YouTube's privacy policies. In part two of this four-part video series, sorry, you're going you to that, see Uncle what Tiny? these scammers do every day. How their shifts work, how they get paid, how they get to and from their offices, and if they're really trusted. And in part three, we're going to follow the <clears> money. Thanks it's recent not faith, the call bro. center workers who make most of the money, so exactly where does it <clears> go? <throat> Who's the brains behind the organization, and is it just one type of scam that they're involved with? Find out in part three. That's These videos this is a lot cooler than I free. thought. However, if you would like to support me in my efforts against scammers, here is a link to my Patreon channel. Nice. There you well, eh, fuck it, we'll let it ride. That was a lot more interesting than the other ones I saw. I always love people that bust scammers, but that was pretty fucking cool. That was a different level. I wish he was more mean, though. Like, if I had the ability to go into, like, the scammers' fucking cameras and watch them live, I would absolutely pretend to be, like, an omniscient force. Like a fucking god. Describing their shit, going over their sins. And just do, like, a... Kind of like a how a psychic cold reads... I just start doing cold reads on them. Get them on edge. All right, let me take a pee, a little tinkle real quick. Thanks to the Risa Yoshi. I'll be right back. Now I'm invested in this call center, like personally. In part one of this four-part video series, I showed how Fairmark travels yeah, it's been good, a Aaron. secret Mall scamming on call center to the rear of their normal premises. Fairmark Travels use pop-up scams to generate calls and revenue. They will require remote access to a victim's computer, but in my case, I was able some to candy reverse this Aiden and hamburger and the prime chicken of their computers. And very unusually, I could see that this operation had CCTV. I could see how their scams worked. And in this video, you're going to see how Thanks they went Swift. about scamming thousands of people in the USA, UK and Australia. Everyone in this room is a scammer. There are 28 seats, and the area in the corner is for the operations managers. These operations managers facilitate the scams, and they will monitor every PC Thanks in the this prime room. Crispy and, and here is Bipo and Monray. The supervisors will see every PC oh, thanks, Rip, switched cool. on in the office. Some of the scammers will waste their time on the likes of websites like 9gag, while others will be looking at the inbound calls okay. and yet more registering customer information on a database that they call Technospine. And this screen shows them preparing documentation for their victims. They will also keep an eye on the turtle. inbound calls. And here's their view of those calls. The ones coloured green are agents engaged in calls. Red away from their desks and yellow sitting waiting. How much calls. does a scammer get paid? Also keep Probably fucking nothing. management team 
fierce. It all goes to the top level, I bet. Speaking with Amit Chayan. He's the managing director of Fairmark Capitals and the sister company, Adrit Technologies. But there'll be much more about him in the next video. But the most important job of the supervisors was to take the payment information and put them into spreadsheets. They had different payment gateways and processes depending on whether the payment was a check or by card. And they would I'm use fine, various sir. company names. I don't need Here's it. a WhatsApp message sent to the supervisor telling them that they would change their name from Shankar Consulting to Ram PC Support. This happened literally overnight. And Damn, this guy is getting dono walled hard. Consulting became known as a scam operation. A Google search of Shankar Consulting shows that the business looks to be associated with scams. So, looking at the is checks written dormant? by their victims, you can see the name changing regularly. There was Charge One, Shankar Consulting, and Ram PC Support, all in the space of just one year. But only a small proportion of their payments came from checks. The vast majority were through a payment gateway, and here you can see one of the supervisors summarizing last night's takings. He's sending a WhatsApp 14K. message to Sidney Garg, who's the chief financial officer. Wow! In a single day, they make over fourteen thousand dollars using the shit. Chinese gateway PES, Arab Esk, eChex, PayPal, GPC, and Tier One gave and resub and those Eternium were and resub typical. Nick. Here's the month of March last year, and it shows that they made nearly four hundred thousand dollars in that month. Fairmark Holy shit! Three million dollars a year in scams. Holy but most shit! Most of that three million dollars doesn't go to the people working on the floor. Here on the right is Amit Sindhu. He is the operations manager for Adra Technologies. That's not bad. The bonuses that each agent's entitled to. They will receive an incentive, a bonus payment for just how much money they make. And this will be a fixed value of rupees. This will be added to their fixed salary, and at the end of the week and month, they will receive their bonus. But they will only typically make about three or four hundred dollars for every ten. To Look at this guy! Fuck, thirteen point six k sales. This is the employee of the month. This guy is uh, crushing it. That guy must be really suave on the phone. He probably just asks for money and nothing else, and there's like, shit, alright, fine. The $20,000 in seals. And of course, you wouldn't expect these sort of payments to appear on any books. So Thanks here in the Asian corner boy. is the operations manager counting out some of the cash. I don't know about that, Julian. To to some of the Thanks for the bit, sideball. The floor. It's vitally important that none of this sort of activity shows up on the company accounts. So they will always use cash. And indeed, there seems to be generally trust issues anyway with the scammers and the operations management. At the start Do of the hour shift, every agent must leave their mobile device in a side office. Uh. This prevents anyone doing any recording. This is fairly typical for scam operations. They wouldn't want to be blackmailed by anyone who had... So why do they have CCTVs in a scam center? Fortunately for us... What could that possibly do for them? CCTV, so we can just see... Just to hard monitor their anyway. workers? Only at the end of the shift are they allowed to reclaim their mobile devices. But it can be quite boring whenever you're a scammer and you have to run a very set script. Here on the bottom left is a scammer who calls himself Nelson... Even when he's hey, talking Nelson. to one of his victims, he gets so bored, he actually sits and plays Pac-Man. An even more Listen boring game, come on. Multitasking. Play something uh, cool. Can I make sure, like, is it like a laptop like RuneScape. or a regular desktop computer? It's a laptop. Microsoft. Laptop, right. Microsoft. And which window are you running on it? Is it like Windows 10 or like the previous version? Um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Windows 10. 10, right. So anyway, you don't have to worry, right? See, sometimes what happens whenever we browse anything over the internet, okay? By any chance, if you might have clicked on any kind of bad link or some kind of unknown or unsecure site. He will continue his Pac-Man game until the time <laughs> that his victim runs the remote access software. Only at this point will he give up gaming and try and persuade the victim that she's got a virus. Thanks, the Prime, uh, the prime you can Scrambled. You see the picture of the fake virus message very clearly on the victim's screen. One minute here. So, like, how old is this computer, do you know? 
I buy I buy for her uh, from yeah seven. <laughs> All right. So we as far I can see, I'm not pretty sure on which website it was exactly. I need to go ahead and check that out for you. Okay, please be with me. Oh, okay, okay. But all of these scammers needed GoToAssist. That's the software that they used to remotely access their victims' PCs, and I was able to observe exactly how they get their hands on the software. The agents would ask the supervisor for a username and password for GoToAssist. They would create it's pretty thorough. on a daily basis. They would simply create brand new disposable email addresses and use those to sign up for a trial version of GoToAssist. This makes it far too easy for scammers just like Fairmart to abuse the GoToAssist software. If there Holy were a better shit. process for restricting the use of this trial version, I'm certain sure the software wouldn't be abused as much as it is. If I really feel like in today's climate, scammers don't need to go through all this much effort. You could probably just say, I will fix this if you give me money. And then give them a place to send money and they will do it without question. Like... Look at what happened when people just posted, I will double your Bitcoin. Like just random YouTube channels said, just posted live streams and videos saying, I will double your Bitcoin, send your Bitcoin here. And they made hundreds of thousands. You remember when they uh, hacked Elon Musk, Bill Gates and all that? All they said is send us your Ethereum and Bitcoin, or I think it was just Bitcoin, to this address and we will double it. And they made so much off that shit. This is so much effort for Dumb people. Just say, give us money, we'll fix it, bang. That's how I'd run my scam call center. Just save time. If they say no, wasn't worth the effort, move on. Someone will say yes. Like, absolutely. Work smarter, not harder, idiots. Shit scammers. If anyone from GoToAssist watches these videos, please take note of how the software is regularly abused by scammers. Please do something about this. And Fairmart were involved in more than one type of prime scam. Flack. You've seen the pop-up. I appreciate it. Well, thank already, you, Sean. But here, courtesy of this guy's WhatsApp, you can see that they were doing outbound calls as well. They seemed to target the people who had already fallen for scams. Oh, you really think that if you fell for it once, it would never happen again? On your network, your personal information may get stolen. So I'm not doing mono audio. I'm fine. And banking. To report this issue, please contact Windows support at 1-855-482-2885 or press 1 to speak to our agent. And they would also pretend to be Amazon and send a lot of fake emails out. Although I don't have the original email, this is an actual voice recording of Luke, who we saw earlier, trying to persuade a victim that he really is <clears throat> Amazon. Thank you for calling Amazon. This is Luke. Can we help you? Yeah, I was just getting a uh, email said I order a TV, but I did not. All right, so just give a moment. Let me check. And when yeah, I watched the Mark Rober collab. Today at uh, three forty-eight. Thanks, the reset the guns. Oh, sweet! Thanks, guns, and thanks, the reset Ghost Pro. Very sneakily, what Lalit does here <clears throat> is enter the password reset routine for Amazon. He types the victim's email address, then asks him for the one-time PIN. I'm going to send you a one-time verification code, okay? Oh, yeah. no! Just to verify that I'm talking to the right customer, okay? Okay. So please check your email and give me the code. Oh, no! Don't if do it! If ever asks you to read out a one-time PIN, it's almost certainly going to be a scam. Always be on the lookout for this. If you're a patron of mine, you can see the whole audio of this scam happening from beginning to end. But this type of scam is all about getting a gift Damn, card. Damn, what is that pixel victim. done? Sounds wild. They'll describe it as a security card, but scammers prefer gift card numbers these days because the money can cleanly be laundered and it's very difficult, if not impossible, Thanks, to get that money back. And because these are 12-hour shifts, depending on how many pop-ups or which type of emails have sent out, it can get very busy, and people will regularly walk around offering tea and coffee. Oh, that's sweet. But of course, with the CCTV there, I can't resist the opportunity to phone up Fairmark Travels and challenge some of the scammers on the floor. I'm going to be speaking to this person. He gives his name as Travis. Get Lee, ready, Travis. His name is Shusan. Let's go. Fuck him up, Jim. Thank 
you for calling to support this site, Travis. How can I help you? Hi. Yeah, I've got saying? like a, a computer lock warning message in front of me, and there's like a beeping sound that says to ring this number. Like what exactly you were doing on the computer, sir, when this happened? So I was trying to watch a movie, <laughs> and it's just okay. stopped, and it's kind of beeping away at me here. No problem, sir. I will check that for you. Can you please confirm me your first and last name? Yeah, it's Dilbert Gokenspine. <laughs> it's a good name. Okay, and the computer that you have is it a laptop? Damn, they all play Pac-Man. Yes. Everyone in the Pac-Man. Everyone in this call center is playing Pac-Man. Holy shit! So just do one thing, sir. I will just check what exactly wrong is going on. Look onto your keyboard. But instead of following his instructions, I decide to ask him who exactly they are. I could find a website here. What what website am I looking for? If I you talk about my company's website, it's iTech. I I tech i t e c h hyphen security that's our website right so i can find it on my phone here yeah just please find it sir just ch take a time and find it right so i've got like a website here i tech security technical support and there's a uh, usa oh true, true. No, no, true. No, no. blocked applications no. yes sir and on the very bottom, sir, you will find my headquarters as well in UK. Right, so you're in the UK. My yeah? mouth address. You're in the UK. No, right now we are located. Right now we are located in California. Right. So what time is it at California? <laughs> Hello. What kind of question is that, sir? I don't Ooh. believe you're in California. I think you have to look it up. Damn sir, blasted! I'm not here to answer these kinds of questions, sir. <laughs> what is the time in California? Well, you don't know it because you're not there, are you? Sir, how can you tell me you're not in California, sir? Because Our you'd be able to answer it. In San Jose, California. You'd, you'd be able to answer it straight away. Instead, you're like. It's six o'clock in California, sir. So you had to look it up. It sounds like you're playing Pac-Man. Say it, Jim. I want to see how he reacts. Why will I look it up, sir? We are not allowed to. We are not. I'm just wearing my watch. I was severely tempted to stay, stop playing Pac-Man. Oh, come on, Jim. Some more on his location. Jim, come on. If you're in San Jose, what does Say the it. center? Say it. What's the central road in San Jose called? I I'm not here to answer these questions, sir. Okay, that tells me everything I need to know. If you really lived there, you would name one restaurant. Anywhere Exit at Prime all in San Jose. Let me tell you one thing, sir. Let me tell you Just one thing. Just name me one street. I'm an Indian. One okay, street. And my headquarters. Are you? I beg in, your pardon? Are you in San Jose or not? <laughs> Definitely, sir. Okay. Can you name me one restaurant in San Jose? Quickly Google it. Wait, that's what Without the fuck was that? Google. Why should I tell you these questions, sir? Because you'd be able to answer it straight away question? without Googling it. Thanks for the bits, Danny. No, I'm not Googling it, sir. <laughs> and I'm not even telling you. Okay, so name me a restaurant in San Jose. What did he type in? I don't want to. What did he type in? You just have to type in San Jose restaurant. I have many. Just say McDonald's. I on Google as well. I know. And that's probably what you're doing. I don't want to do that. Because I'm, I'm not here to answer these questions. I'm not here to answer these questions. I should give some ghosts and read some soul well, I bet you're looking at Google right now. I'm not doing that, sir. <laughs> okay, so name me, I don't know, what the railway station is called in San Jose. I don't know that as well. I said, <laughs> sir, I don't live in San Jose. What I'm an either? Indian. My what? headquarters are based in San Jose, so I, li I do my job over here. So is there some shaking Drake in days? No idea, Big I'm an Indian. I said I live in India. But in San Jose, we are having our headquarters, so I travel across right. the world. So, so sorry, you are in India then? No, I'm not in India. Right now, I'm in San Jose. Right, so <laughs> why don't you know anything about San Jose? 
because i love my job i respect my job i don't here i don't come here to make fun and i don't here come here to travel i come here to do my job so you must you must live outside the office somewhere <laughs> he's so yeah. confused it's right now god damn trimble road Trimble road. Trimble road is where your headquarters are i'm asking even to name the street that you live in sir if i am living in trimble road definitely my headquarters is there as well sir so you 181 live... west trimble road so you live beside where you work the same street sir are you insane what <laughs> question you are asking me sir if you are having a office over there definitely you will be yeah, you fucking office. idiot what do you mean are you dumb so come on is it impossible is question to answer where trimble road is in san jose yeah. you ever seen it in the prime skidoosh and it's all offices there's no there's no residential places there have a look yourself yeah. you, you plainly that don't that does there. not mean that if that it does not it that, that does not mean that i do not live over here we are having a team of almost like 150 to 200 people we all live in office, office only sir <laughs> live in the office you sleep in the office do you yeah. <laughs> you have beds in the office yeah. really yeah See, so you, you actually sleep there as well, and you don't go out, and you've never heard of anything. He loves his job. He loves his job. No, no. Let me tell you one thing. Offices in your street might be uh, small, sir. Thanks to the problem, Stefano and Rusev, Rusev Jimmy. I know. I'm looking at it in Street View, and they're all business offices. I just can't believe that you actually sleep in your office as well. And presumably, when you landed, why didn't you do Sanosang. one thing, sir? Why did? Uh huh. No, no. Why don't you do one thing, sir? Okay. Yeah. Book your ticket to California and come tomorrow to California. I've been there. Book your ticket and come tomorrow to California. Why are you looking on the Google, sir? I'm not looking. Oh 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 oh. I've been to San Jose already. Oh oh. I have friends in San Jose. He's I'm getting wild. I book my ticket to Delhi and and visit you there. Why will you book the ticket to Delhi? Because that's where you are. I'm sure. I used to give some fancy. You're wrong. I'm not in Delhi. Well, why has everybody around you that I can hear got an Indian accent? There is no. Who said that everyone over here has an Indian I, accent? I can hear all the voices around you. There must be people next to you, and they're all speaking with an Indian accent. Why? Why would what that they, be? What they're saying, sir. No, no. What they're saying. Can you hear them? Oh yes, can I you can. tell them what you do? Jim, you need to scare yeah, him. Saying what scare said, him. Things like press the windows key with a letter on. Tell him to tap the guy's shoulder next well, to him and describe his shirt. No, no, no. They are not saying. Well, they all have Near Indian me, there is no one sitting. Only one person. Prime Swiss and Rishabh Hexer are following. Near me, no one is sitting. Only one person is sitting. Yeah, but they're all following the old tech support script, scam script. They're all saying press windows are. I think I think you know this, don't you? Are you still there? I mean, there can't be can't be a difficult. Tell him to, to sit back this. down in his chair, Jim. I I I just can't understand. And that his bracelets are fucking dumb. I don't want to answer these questions, sir. You have wasted much of my time. Thank you so much. I haven't really, Travis. I haven't really. I just want to know why you're scamming people. cut me off. Yep. Damn it, Jim. I guess he wanted us like three of this video series. Continue to spy the on them and find out who all the key players are. We can trace all of the scam payments back to this man's PayPal account. We'll find out who he is I'm and so how invested. he sets up his business. And things have moved on since I initially created this video. Now the police have become involved and they've arrested the person at the top here. <laughs> the company goes by several aliases and their own screen, and if you think you or a relative has been affected by their Pussy. Scam, please contact the police on the email address shown here and in the description. I actually, my fucking steamrolled. Damn! I wish Jim would just play a little harder, just just a bit, just a bit. But he's doing like in noble part one work. In this video series, I showed how Fairmark Travels had a secret scam call center 
to the rear of their premises. Exit Prime, Papa Glock. Fairmart are involved in pop-up scams and they also pretend to be Amazon. They will use both these sorts of scams to try and get money out of their victims. In part two, we saw the supervisor noting just how much money each of the scammers had made and this would determine their bonus. Their bonus payment was paid in cash. In the corner here is Amit Sindhu. He's the prime he is one of three or four operations managers in the for tier one Will Franken. or as they call themselves, Eleven Hub. He's not only responsible for handing out the bonuses, but also making sure that the scams operate as intended. According to Amit's LinkedIn profile, and I suspect this page will be removed soon, he seems to have been working in the company since 2015. Is the insomnia. But the person who sits at the top of the chain is also called Amit. On the left here is Amit Chayan. He is the CEO of Fairmore Travels and is the ex-director of Abdrit Technologies. Nice! It's not clear why he's no longer that director, but he was <clears> until <throat> fairly recently. Indeed, Android Technologies still have Amit's email address as the contact email for the company. Exit between. Once this video is released, undoubtedly Amit will try to distance himself from this company. But the scammers were taking payments, and I traced the PayPal payments directly to Amit. This is a screenshot from their PayPal page. It clearly shows that Amit Chayan is the Chief Financial Officer of Android Tech, and his business was known by several aliases. <laughs> Here you can see 24-7 fix. Jim's got him. When the supervisors would log into PayPal, it was clear that their victims' details were also there. They would send invoices via Ooh. PayPal so I could trace got all fucked of the up there. from the victims directly to Amit. There's the prime paper tiger infused. And the PayPal account showed that thousands of dollars were being transferred from victims in the USA UK and holy shit this is all in a single day all of that that whole page was one day damn Emmett man was fucking banking how is there this many like geriatric octogenarians that fall for this shit that's crazy Australia and don't forget that this was just one of five different payment gateways being used by this company. When the payments came off hold, Exit they Prime were transferred bed, to the Jackson and bank Revenge. account. But Amit was very careful never to set foot in the scamming offices themselves. Instead, he would meet with the floor supervisors on occasions in his office in the main building. And it was in those offices that Amit masterminded some of the scams that his company would run. Here, in Amit's office, he would invite some of his business colleagues. The big guy on the bottom left is called Anna and the other guy on the right is called Amar. Between the three of them, they run a company called z -Core Solutions, and here they're discussing some of the next scams that they're about to undertake. <laughs> Fortunately for us, the only part of the building where the CCTV has audio are his offices. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he installed the cameras in order to catch himself. Classic Amit. He highlighted the parts which are in English so that it's easier to understand. The group is tier one Ash. Agents they'll need, how many days they'll work, what sort of commission they'll get, and ultimately what sort of scams they're about to operate. Until this frame. point, they've mostly been running pop-up scams, but here the suggestion is to run the refund scam and pretend to be Amazon. And not only was the work to be kept a secret, here they're discussing how they do the Amazon scam. The Amazon oh, scam is becoming Komodo. more and more common. Thank you, Komodo. Appreciate send it. a lot of bulk emails and pretend to be a billing department of Amazon. The order will contain the victim's name, but of course it's all fake. They just want the phone call. When an agent receives this phone call, they will try and persuade the victim that they've got a security or hacker problem. And the way to get around this problem is to go and buy a card. They will describe this as a security card, but in fact the victim would be buying a gift prime. card. The currency Clean up crew. scammers. If you're a patron of mine, you can hear some recent examples of some of the audio that I've captured. With yeah, he's good, Foxy. Scam. And to the outside world, Amit appears like a very successful entrepreneur. Last year, he visited Germany and Amsterdam, Singapore, 
New York, Aww. Las Vegas, Aww. Bhutan, Chandigarh, Thailand, and most recently, Sri Lanka. Around and then even more recently, offices, jail. He has profound quotes from the likes of Steve Jobs. And this is his birthday cake, which features parts of Amit's life. On the left here is his black Porsche. He has a real one. On the right are some iPads and other Apple devices. In the middle, a laptop. And on the right yeah, I know what side, that is, Jimmy. lots I'm of familiar. dollars. And to the and right of all of this, this is thank main you, Dev. Fairmark Appreciate building. the generosity. No mention of the secret one out the back. But all the time, his company are scamming older or vulnerable people. Uh, I have MS, and I'm just I'm a nervous wreck, and I I can't understand a lot. So I'm listening don't real worry, don't, close. Don't be getting nervous, Miss. Okay, right now you're in safe hands. Okay, that is the reason you're telling me that you won't live for the next year as well, right? Probably <laughs> not. No, no, no. Don't tell me that, Miss. I, I'm a diabetic, and I'm legally blind. Okay. Uh, and you know. I'm pretty. <laughs> what the fuck? Some of the phone calls that I listened into are absolutely heartbreaking, and that was just one of them. I have tried to report Fairmark Travels and Amit Chayan via the National Cybercrime Portal for India, but this portal just doesn't work. You're supposed <laughs> to receive a one-time pin to a mobile okay. number, but it looks as if that part is broken, so I can't even report the crime this way. Instead, and only because I know exactly where the building is and therefore which police service and which district is involved, I reported the crime to the Haryana police. And initially, when I submitted the report, absolutely nothing happened. I didn't even get an acknowledgement email. This was pretty much expected. Okay. I've never really had any response from any police service in India. So instead, I did something new. I reached out to a documentary crew in the UK and called Panorama, and I shared my material with them. They have Next much larger budgets rock. than me, and they even had the ability to travel to India to confront the owners. And that's exactly what they did. There's a link in the top right hand corner to that Panorama documentary and I'll pick up in part four. Really smart idea. Those videos and the documentary went live. But to reuse Amit's favorite quote, this operation can only work if it's run by a team of people. And one of the most important people in that team is Sahil Garg. He is the accountant for this company. And I witnessed the operations managers making their daily reports on how much money they'd scammed the previous day directly. All right, Satan, hope you had a good day. So I can now put together a picture of the key players in this scam. Top of the tree is Amit Chayan, and he is the director of Fairmark Travels and the ex-director of Adrit Technologies. The people that he plans the scams with are called Anuj and Amar, and between the three of them, they own two companies, Zcore Solutions and Capnerds Venture. Anuj and Amar no independently use? have a different travel company called yeah, Travel Dino Matrix. Man and a marketing division called A Square Marketing. They are also co-owners of a nightclub in Delhi. Jim Browning's like a real world version of Amar L from Death Note. He posts lots of this footage inside the nightclub on his Facebook page. Woo! Let's go! You have to wonder where all the money came from to buy a nightclub like this. And so back to the key players. One of the most important people here we've covered is Sahil Garg, and he is the accountant for all of Amit's <coughs> businesses, including Fairmart and Adrit Technologies. The co-director of Fairmart is Asif Bat. It's unclear whether he have has a good anything night, to do with the scams, so I've left his face blurred. The two people beside him in this diagram are Asif Trideri and Amit Sindhu, both operations managers for Adrit Technologies. And finally, at the top of the diagram is another director of one of the companies that Amit owns. Amit's wife Sonia is co-director of Capnerd's Payment Solutions. It's unclear what this payment solutions business does, but there is a similarly named Capnerd's Venture which is owned by Amar, Anuj and Amit. Given their track record, it's hard not to believe this is associated with scams. 
But what about Amit's main business, Fairmark.com? Is it legitimate? Well, in 2019, they had a plainly fake address. <clears throat> they claimed to be at an address in Delaware, but when looked at on Google Maps, it was plainly a residential area oh, and rough. An office location. But since the TV crew became more interested in Fairmart, they've now rented a different office address, this time in Denver, Colorado. I've been told that although they rent this address, they don't seem to meet there very often. But on Trustpilot, Fairmart.com seems to be doing pretty well. 80% of the reviews look like they're excellent, and only a small proportion seem to be poor or bad. But when you look carefully at these reviews, there does seem to be a bit of a pattern. Any of the good or excellent reviews seem to name every agent by name. And the good reviewers only seem to have ever reviewed just one company, Fairmart.com. No, 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 they were just so passionate. Don't mention agents by name. The original promised fare is increased and it seems almost impossible to get your money back. So although I can't definitively prove this, I believe that Fairmart.com are internally writing their own good reviews and any poor ones are legitimate. But there's one thing that I am sure about, and that's that they pretend to be the reservations for Delta Airlines. They <laughs> probably seeded their phone number to make it look as if they are the front desk for Delta. The following conversation was recorded in December 2019 and shows just how deceptive Fairmart will be. Thank you for calling reservations. So I'm going to help you today. Uh, yes, good some hug. Evening. Uh, my name is Randy. I'm holding a uh, Delta Sky Miles credit card mm -hmm. and I have a challenge here I wanted to use point to travel uh, I'm going to my residency for my uh, for my doctorate mm -hmm. and I'm coming up short here on point I'm surprised he's not playing Pac-Man I was told by mm -hmm. someone that he's actually listening this, um, for those you know Delta Sky Miles card holders that you all might be able to assist me with some points to try and book mm -hmm. this flight, uh, so I was okay. kind of sure. Sure, definitely. So what I understood here is you would like to book a flight using your points, right? That's correct. Yeah. Definitely, sir. I can insist on that. So, okay, how many points do you have, sir? <laughs> That's a good question. Is it tier one first form freezer? So, um, to book this flight, I don't, I and the resub sniper. Uh, that is fine, sir. I would love to check it for you. Can I have your uh, Delta Sky Miles number? Up until this point, this Fairmart agent hasn't given any indication that he isn't Delta, and he has no access to any systems which will allow him to look up the Delta Sky Miles details. So what does he do? Okay, 921. Mm -hmm. And can I have the password? And can I have the password? He's breaking the number one rule <laughs> of any customer interactions. No legitimate person will ever ask for your password. Not this true. Is a sure sign that it's a scam. People Even on RuneScape do. Airways would never ask their customers for their password. This victim is slightly taken aback by someone asking for his password. Do they normally give out the password? <laughs> yeah, of course. Without a password, uh, you cannot log in. Okay. Okay, hold on one second. Oh that my god. How? How? Okay, okay. How? He's not even I like an old man. Audio, but suffice to He's say, going for his doctorate. wasn't able to log in despite having the right password, and there may have been security checks which triggered a blocked login. So even if Fairmart do call themselves a legitimate travel company, some of their practices are, at best, questionable. The reviews are certainly fake. And these practices of asking people for their passwords is probably illegal. I have passed on this information to the Delta Sky Miles team, and hopefully they are able to take action against Fairmart.com. So we're going to leave part three with Luke here on the right, chalking up just oh, how much money flew. he's made on this shift. When he writes it up on the board, it should translate into a nice bonus for him. He, together with about 30 other scammers, have managed to scam upwards of $3 million from people all over the UK, US and Australia. He is employed by Android tier one Technologies, no an offshoot of Fairmart.com, and they use common infrastructure. 
They'll typically use ringma.com and ETI tell for their phone numbers, again shared with their main business. I think the recent is Oregon. And once they have scammed people, they will follow up on these scams with other ones. They will claim that there are yet more hackers or problems on people's PCs in order to get yet more money out of their victims. They will pretend to be other companies Thank like you, Amazon and no, Delta not. Airlines in order to extract as much money as possible. So as Lalit goes into the side office to recollect his mobile phone, his company, together with hundreds of others in the Kolkata and Delhi districts, will be undertaking the same sort of scams day in, day out. And it's only when the police in India get serious about Thank this sort Mr. of crime will something be done about it. The portal for cybercrime reporting needs to be fixed, and any complaints need to be followed up on. I can provide lots of intelligence for other similar scam call centers. But until this action happens, people here, I cannot believe that shit. As he's really called, will be free to do these scams as often as he likes. And not only will he make money, but his boss Amit will make money. So as we watch him leave the scam call center. Let's hope that some good at least comes from this set of videos. I certainly intend to expose these scammers for what they do. And if you wish to support me, there is a link to my Patreon channel below. Alright, we're on to part four. I always make these videos free, but any support you can give me is most welcome. Seems like such a good guy. Alright, and now the finale. Hopefully it ends with some kind of like crazy shootout bombs, something wild, a fire perhaps, maybe a tsunami. Like, I, I want this shit to go full Michael Bay in part four. In the first few parts of this video series, I discovered a scamming call center who had CCTV. I was able to use their own CCTV to watch how they ran their scams. They had a secret office out the back of their main building, where nice, around Sam. 20 to 30 scammers would operate on a daily basis. They would get bonuses paid in cash for scamming people in Australia, UK and the US. And they would run multiple scams. They would pretend to be Amazon or Microsoft and send out pop-up messages to infect people's computers. But it was only when I started working with a BBC documentary crew that the world had its attention on this scam. Thank you for holding the line. I really appreciate your time and patience. My name is Chris Lawson. <laughs> yeah, it is very hot here in California. Thanks for uh, dirt. Yeah, I'll have to come over there then. <laughs> yeah, please. We'll go to the beaches, you know. Oh, that'd be nice. The BBC produced this trailer before their documentary, and it had a huge impact. We need to repair all the services which got broken, all right? Yeah, I'll see that. Sir, there would be a charge of twelve ninety-five. Okay. So let me get it done. <laughs> hey, why are you crying, man? You're a very oh, bad man. Oh no! <laughs> suffer from depression. No, 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 sir. Everything will be okay. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now promise me you won't cry again. Okay. These pictures of scammers laughing at one of their unfortunate victims had a very profound effect Damn. on a number of people. And the CCTV caught not just the scammers themselves, but the boss, Amit Chowan. And by tracing the payments from the victims, it led directly to this call center boss. It also showed him planning some scams and taking advice from others pile of who were clearly experienced in this sort of fraud. I hope you're doing well, Pyle. And I was able to show a direct link between the victim's payments and Amit Chowan's accounts. And with that money, he was living a luxury lifestyle. Yeah, he's on top of the world, baby. In this trailer, it caught the attention. It's Amit's world. We're just getting scammed in it. The story went as far as New Zealand. So when the TV documentary was broadcast on UK national television on the 2nd of March 2020, it reached a very wide audience. And one of the people supposedly watching was this man. 
His name is Karan Goel and he heads up the Cybercrime Police in Gurugram, the location of Amit's scam call centre. And in under 12 hours from the broadcast of the TV programme, Karan's team raided the call centre. Woo! And they went into the right place. They went to the building behind Fairmart where the scammers were located. They also went to Amit Chon's luxurious home address and there they picked up some of his laptop equipment. Johan was living in the DLF Magnolias building in New Delhi. The Magnolias apartment complex was a luxurious location. It overlooked an Olympic size swimming pool tier one link. and had access to a golf course. Some crunchy. And Chohan's rent for this apartment was 5 lakh or 500,000 rupees. That's about $6,000 per month. That sort of rent is almost unheard of in mm. Delhi. And according to reports, the laptop contained the scripts which the scammers would use to dupe their victims. Surely Jim was watching when they raided, right? I'd love to see the footage. Victims, including email addresses, credit and debit card numbers, and checks written to one of the many aliases. So as Goal was giving the press conference, he revealed some of the critical details of the arrest. Do they not have handcuffs? Just They're just Joel holding hands. Arrested. Here on the right is Sumit Kumar, who was supposedly the accountant for this company. The newspaper reports revealed that Joan and Kumar were both college dropouts, and that the police had sufficient evidence to press charges against both. So bizarrely, hand in hand with their arresting police officers, they were paraded in front of the cameras in the nice. police station. So this is obviously an amazing success, something I never thought Thanks would be Thanks to the possible. gifts of gangbang and no cat. Honestly, I don't think anything would have happened had I just produced the video on my own. It really needed the extra media attention. But there are still a number of loose ends, particularly how are the victims going to get their money back? Well, that's well, at least one not going to happen, story. I don't think. Because the person who was featured at the start of this video, who lost more than £1,200, has been compensated. But that didn't come through the seizure of assets. Instead, someone who's a viewer of my channel felt so sorry for the man who had been crying and was suffering from depression that he offered to return all of the money that was stamped to him ice pro from his own pocket. Aww. I've got to keep the victim's details as private as possible, but Rory, on behalf of this entire channel, thank you for being so generous to a complete stranger. And police in Gurugram have asked anyone who thinks they may be a victim of this scam to get in touch via the email address on screen and in the description. But there was more than just Johan and his Weiler. accountant involved in this scam. We had CCTV which showed him meeting with some of his business associates and they were the ones who were able to explain to him You've how certain scams friends. would work. And even though they had been they, caught oh shit, red hey, thanks for the raid. how those scams Welcome. would be set up, they still had the nerve to complain friends. about the videos which had their faces and names already blurred on YouTube. Oh, fuck. So even though I'd been careful to blur out their details, they still wanted Appreciate to the raid. silence me. And it's understandable. So in a clear abuse of YouTube's privacy policy, they raised this complaint Welcome. against me. But I've done absolutely nothing wrong. None of their personal details are revealed and instead I'm going to put a link in the description to where people can read more about these two characters. But that will of course be outside YouTube. The link will show the evidence that this pair run other scam call centres and this is how they've got the expertise. Let's just hope that the Haryana police will also take an interest in these two. And they should but fix the their website. have work to do to get their own house in order. The official National Cybercrime Reporting Portal only works Thanks if the you've got an Indian smash. mobile number. And not only that, you have to select the specific state because that particular yeah, it was a fake force raid, it seems. Wild. Most people Wild. have an IP address Must have been Amit. and will not know the exact region and therefore the exact police force to get I just looked at the with. name. And it doesn't it's help one when the Delhi police admit that it's a difficult crime to crack. Their system should help them. I'm showing a still from the Panorama documentary where they interview one of the police heads in Delhi. He said that very few victims come forward to report the crime and, well, their portal won't help in that respect. And it's also almost impossible to identify the call centre involved, and I totally agree with that. If more people were allowed to legally do what I do, I'm certain sure that a lot of these call centres would be uncovered and more arrests could be made.
Agreed. But this is why Agreed. I do what I've been doing. You cannot tell from the phone number or anything to do with the caller ID who is behind the scam. You don't even need a physical telephone line in your office to run these robocall scams. And there are hundreds of these scam call centres throughout India, mostly in the Delhi and Kolkata regions, but also in some of the other major cities. I have reported to the police almost every one of the pins on this map, but until now, nothing has been done about it. So I'm hoping that this series of videos can actually make a real change in India and the Indian police's ability to act on the reports that I send. I still can't encourage anyone to do exactly what I do because it's perceived as illegal. However, when the scammer connects to my computer, I can show 100% of the time that ah. they are trying to steal money from me. No. This may not be a valid defence, but at least it will probably discourage a complaint. Oh, hold on, I can't hear you one sec. some unexpected benefit. What? I didn't, I've been using the same one all day. Benefits of this particular... Huh? I don't know, I've been using the same one all day. I wasn't even home most of the day, so it's just been the same one. Oh, I don't know then. Particular scam. On Easy screen, tier one is a flawless in the resub soaked. Hey, nice to meet you. And bearded wonder. Welcome to Rescam. And what does this system do? I'm an artificially intelligent email bot made to reply to scam emails. I'm anyone and no one. As oh, far as nice. Is new, I'm you. And what this bot will do is... I adopt one of my many personalities. To continue the conversation of any would-be victim. I waste their time with a never-ending series of questions and anecdotes. <laughs> so that they have less time to pursue real people. So a I love that shit. Geared to automatically replying to scam emails. Can you imagine a system which would trap those robocalls and keep scammers occupied with realistic conversations? They won't know when they're scamming or getting scammed out of their own time. Is there a sub for fire? Deleting a scam email protects you, but forwarding to me at rescam.org protects others. It's also kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> So because I've got more than 70,000 recordings of real scams, it may be possible through artificial intelligence to keep scammers occupied when they make phone calls. Obviously these I calls love it. Would need to be anonymized and there are probably some legal implications of all of it, of course, Steve. but in theory they could be used to help prevent scams in the future. I'm currently in discussions with a U.S. university to try and do just Kid that. Boga, yeah. Can we create an artificial intelligence which will keep scammers? Is it tier one, Luke on Rocks? Imagine an automated version. Hey, there's of Kid, Kid Boga or Hoax Hotel. The conversations wouldn't be as funny, but they certainly will be realistic. But since I may never get to see these scammers on their own CCTV again, I'm going to leave you with a little clip with Sam here in the top right being called out by one of his potential victims. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you for calling technical department. You're talking to Sam, how can you help me? Is it tier one, Perry? Yeah, what is the company name? Oh, rough, uh, it's uh, left so channel. The company name is Premium Technical Support, and yeah. that is Shit. based out in California. How can I help you? Premium technical support. I can't hear it. What's your right. address? Sir, the company is based out in California, San Jose. Alright. So I'm not doing mono audio. What kind of, what kind of problem you're facing with the computer? Yeah. It's a virus. Well, annotations bring it up. Let's see. Okay. So if I ask you, sir, can you please tell me what exactly we're doing on the machine when this came Thanks up on the Thanks to the resub, Rhett and Tier 1 Perry. Oh, I don't know. Went to a website and the next thing I know, it pops up a little box saying to call you bastards with some kind of bribe or, you know. Okay. And uh, if I ask you, sir, is that the first time that you came across all these issues with or you have before as well? 
Thanks, you said Colonel Chicken. What's that? I'm asking, is that very first time that you came across all these issues, or you had yeah. before in the past? So what do you want? You want my IP address so you can hack me and make me a remote robot, or what? No, of course. So why will I do that? I'm not a hacker. Well, I don't know. Why is your number mm -hmm. there? Because, as I said, like, might be it's a Trojan attack, or might be you have some infections in your computer, who is creating lots of, you know, problems inside your machine. So that is why you have the alert with you, so that before it goes anything wrong, you can get it fixed. That's why you got the hour number, okay? Thanks, the resub sauce. Alright. Eh, mm, it's not that big of a deal, skeleton. Can you hear me? I'm just right, curious so what scam you guys are running. It's a so scam that you're running. So what do you mean by scam? Fraud. Fraud, scam, swindle. The subtitles aren't really what helpful. What are you trying to do? <clears throat> so like, first of all, let me tell you. Here, what you're kind not of program or whatever are you trying to sell? You're a scammer. I'll tell you. You're not even in the uh, United States. No, it's, yes, we are. If you want, you can come, like, physically at, at our place in California. Well, I'm just curious, what kind of a fraud ad are you running on a website that pops up and threatens people to call your number? Thanks, you said Broccoli. If you're a patron of mine, you can see a different ending, one which would be an instant demonetization on YouTube, but it is very funny. If you would like to support me Thanks on Patreon, tier one, there's a link here and in the description below. And catch me on Twitter at jimbronning11. Again, thank you for watching. That was a great series with a very happy ending. I actually went to jail. Fuck yeah. That was good. There's a lot of these channels now. Which is, I think, a good thing. It's a really cool trend. At some point... It's going to be like every scam call center is just going to be content for YouTubers to use. And they're never going to get the chance to scam old people anymore. They're constantly being milked for content on YouTube, which is good. Thanks for the gift sub, Fiery, in the Prime. I'm built differently. I'm built differently.